the CDF, not for the sake of members of parliament, but for the sake of the people we represent. Those people who have no voice if we don't speak to them. Those people who judges cannot hear unless we speak to the judges. Let us ask our judges to drop the politics Leave NGCDF alone and allow the children of Kenya to access education, allow the people of the North Rift, allow those who are terrorized by terrorists to live in a country where they are secure. Jeanette. Mr. Speaker, I can't agree more, Mr. Speaker, with the majority leader that this is a political judgment, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there is no act of parliament that has been subjected to litigation more than the CDF Act, Mr. Speaker. And this is done basically by people who hate members of parliament. They are not doing it for anything else other than hatred that they have for members of parliament, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when I saw, when I read the judgment of Mr. Speaker of the court, I, I was shocked, Mr. Speaker, because in 2013, the same act was subjected to litigation, Mr. Speaker, and at that time they were saying that Parliament is, cre is dividing the revenue into three, national government revenue, county government revenue, and the CDF, Mr. Speaker. Subsequently, this House did an amendment and did the division of revenue where the money was divided between the county governments and the national government, and the CDF was put under the national government, Mr. Speaker. There is no difference between a ministry that is getting an allocation from the, from the national budget of the national government that the CDF is a speaker. Mr. Speaker, I was shocked to see in the judgment of the court that one of the reasons why they are saying this act is unconstitutional is because parliament passes seven names of members of the CDF committee, Mr. Speaker. How many names do we pass here? We pass even names of commissions, we, name, we pass names of... Uh, County Secretary, we, pa we pass names here, uh, PSS, a AG, we pass here even Commission of, uh, of what this is called, Commission of, uh, uh, Communication Authority, Mr. Speaker. Now, what is the problem of passing names here? The other thing that has shocked me about this judgment, Mr. Speaker, is that they are saying the term of the fund manager is for five years, which is equivalent to five years of, st of, 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 of being a member of parliament, Mr. Speaker. They are fund managers who have been in office for the last 20 years, Mr. Speaker. I don't know where the judges were reading, what were they were reading, Mr. Speaker, whether they read the submissions of our lawyers, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am shocked because the judges look, we, we are behaved as though they live in another country, Mr. Speaker. Recently, there was a barrier in my constituency, and I must say this, of a judge, Mr. Speaker. And the funeral was conducted in a primary school. And those classes were built by CDF, Mr. Speaker. They were not built by county government or built by anybody else. Mr. Speaker, the way the CDF has changed the lives of Kenyans, Mr. Speaker, every person knows in this country, including judges. Do they not go home? Do they, come from, do they not come from villages in this country, Mr. Speaker? And people, I'm asking the judges on the floor of this house, Mr. Speaker, from the floor of this house, Mr. Speaker, in my constituency alone, there are over 3,000 to 4,000 students who benefit from bursary. Children of single mothers, orphans, Mr. Speaker. Where do they expect us to take those children, Mr. Speaker? If CDF is crap, me, the best thing I can do is to put those children in a bus and bring them to the homes of the judges, Mr. Speaker, so they can give them fees, so that those children can go back to school, Mr. Speaker. You can't make the lives of Kenyans miserable by just being a, a judgment that does not make any sense, Mr. Speaker, according to me. And we are allowed to critic judgment, Mr. Speaker. They had their say, we, are, we must have our say here on this floor, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have been a believer. I have been a supporter of the independence of the judiciary, Mr. Speaker. But now I've come to believe that judiciary now is living in an ivory tower, and they must come down from that ivory tower, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the problem in this country about the three arms of government. The other two arms of government, the executive and the legislature, are subjected to accountability through elections after every five years. Judges are never accountable to anyone. They are accountable to themselves and to JSC, where majority of the members are judges, Mr. Speaker. And you just wait until you reach 70 or 74 years and you retire, you are not accountable to anybody. How do you want to make the lives of Kenyans so miserable by saying that CDF is not doing anything? Mr. Speaker, CDF is unconstitutional. 
This is a judgment that has been procured by the Council of Governors, Mr. Speaker. And it is out of egos. They don't want any other money. They don't want any other money to come to the, to the, to the constituencies or to the villages, Mr. Speaker. And what is happening in devolution, you know all of us, and everybody in this country knows. Corruption, you know, pilferage, lethargy, incompetence. The only money, Mr. Speaker, that has touched the lives of Kenyans for the last 20 years is the CDF, Mr. Speaker. And I want to tell the One minute, one minute. M Mr. Speaker, the name of the fund is NGCDF, National Government, Mr. Speaker. It's not county government, it's not judiciary fund, it's not parliamentary fund, it's not anybody's fund. It's the national government money that is going to the constituencies so that it can build schools, it can build classes, it can build police station, and they're saying there's duplication of functions. We don't do anything outside what the national government is doing. Security and education are not developed functions, Mr. Speaker. Counties don't do that. Will education improve if today's CDF is abolished? Mr. Speaker, we are going to appeal this judgment, but, but we will also do a constitutional amendment. We have the powers even to amend the constitution. The judiciary doesn't have. You can declare the act unconstitutional as many times as you like, but we will make sure CDF remains in this country, Mr. Speaker. I submit. Yes, uh, Kainan. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I was privileged to be a member of parliament before CDF came into being. I was privileged also to see Engineer Karue apply his creative mind, Mr. Speaker, and come up with this unique development initiative, Mr. Speaker. And I've seen what CDF has done. I have represented two concerns, Mr. Speaker. The amount, the number of development projects initiated in my former constituency called Wajia West and my current constituency called Eldas, Mr. Speaker, through CDF is more than the combined development initiative since we got independence, Mr. Speaker. In our place, we say CDF is our government. Mr. Speaker, I want to ask myself, the framers of the current constitution, we read Article 1, sovereignty has been equated to representation. Who are these busy bodies who want to disregard representation, Mr. Speaker, and rubbish the role of the elected members of parliament, Mr. Speaker? I have one message for you. We have seen the actions, the inactions, the activities, the inadvertence of these busy bodies, whoever they are. Can you stand firm? Can you stand firm as members of parliament? It's not about the usual complaining, no. Can you stand firm, bring a constitutional amendment so that we entrench the NCDF in the constitution so that we remove it from the ambit of this gullible and vulnerable busy body, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, for how long shall we deny Kenyans the right to enjoy a piece of the national cake, Mr. Speaker? I'm shocked and dismayed, Mr. Speaker, to see a ruling, and ideally, Mr. Speaker, the role of the three arms of government, Mr. Speaker, is interdependent, is to support each other for the good of the well-being of Kenya, Mr. Speaker. But when you have a targeted approach, Mr. Speaker, to rubbish one arm, then doesn't add value. Mr. Speaker, finally, what I want to say is this. When the members of parliament are elected here, or those, the framers of the current constitution, Mr. Speaker, some of the functions have been devolved. After this, you will hear provisional administration is illegal because NCDF only covers education and national security. Are those two functions, Mr. Speaker, county functions? They are not county functions. These are national functions. So, colleagues, if you want to remain relevant, I know it's not the ambit of the members of parliament because we have, we have delinked NCDA from the member of parliament. It's completely an independent entity. That still is being pushed to the member of parliament. I beg you, if you want to remain relevant, if you want your concerns to develop, stand firm, wake up tomorrow, put your heads together, put this entity in tragedy in the constitution so that there is no room for any busy bodies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Kadambi. Charity Kadambi. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. Allow me to contribute like my colleagues. In this country, Mr. Speaker, sir, I would wonder which Kenyan has not seen the changes which CDF has really brought in this country. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, sir, 
My issue is to remind the uh, people that what CDF is doing in this country, I doubt if there is another fund which is doing what CDF is doing. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, with the changes, with the poor children we are taking to schools, with the schools we are changing, with the security office, offices we are constructing, with the administration offices we are doing, Mr. Speaker, sir, I am so much worried that there is people up to now, they have not seen what is happening. And Mr. Speaker, sir, I am contributing because myself being the second term uh, member of parliament in general constituency. What I have done in my constituency, Your Excellency, Mr. Speaker, sir, for the first term is what has brought me the second term. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I'm standing here to remind our colleagues let us unite this journey. This is war against development. Mr. Speaker, sir, it is now the high time we united as members of parliament. We change even if it means changing the constitution so that we can make sure that the CDF is well anchored in the constitution. Mr. Speaker, sir, we have gotten a lot of challenge every time. Whichever time we are doing our works as members of parliament from single constituencies, actually we are not at peace because every time we are distracted by so many cases in the courts. And Mr. Speaker, sir, as I'm standing here today, Kenyans are asking, are they safe? Are their children going to go to schools? Are they expecting more constructions of schools? When they have seen the challenge which has taken recently in the courts, Mr. Speaker, sir, let me confirm that Kenyans are worried that today there is a threat for the CDF. Therefore, for colleagues, please let us wake the 290 constituencies. Let us protect the development. Let us fight for our children. Let us fight for the development for this constituency through CDF. Mr. Speaker, sir, thank you very much. It is for us to unite and say no to whoever is against our development matters. Thank you. Yes, uh, Chairman CDF. I would have thought you'd, you should have been the last to speak on this. Oh. Yes. You are the committee chair. Listen to yeah. others. You will speak last. Naisula. Chairman, hold your horses. I've been seeing you menacing me with gestures. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to rise to also contribute on the judgment on NGCDF, Mr. Speaker, and to say that we cannot overemphasize the importance of NGCDF in our constituencies, Mr. Speaker. There is this notion among many people that NGCDF is pocket change for members of parliament. I want to say without fear or favor that if there is one fund that there is accountability for, it is NGCDF. NGCDF goes to the constituency with an AIE with what it is supposed to do and the money follows that AIE. And so even when auditors come to the ground, Mr. Speaker, they have to go and see whether that classroom has been built. They have to go and see whether that police station has been built. They have to see whether that child has gotten bursary. And that is the truth on the ground, Mr. Speaker. And if there is anybody who thinks that there is a member of parliament who is misusing this money, Mr. Speaker, we have investigative bodies, Mr. Speaker, which we should go and follow up on those monies and that member of parliament, Mr. Speaker. But we cannot be blanketly be condemned to be corrupt that NGCDF is our money, Mr. Speaker, when that is not the point, Mr. Speaker. We can also not be a house of lamentation. We are the ones who make the laws in this house, Mr. Speaker. We will not wait for an ad report to entrench NGCDF in the constitution. We should extract NGCDF from NADCO reports so that we bring it to this House as a standalone issue to be entrenched in the Constitution, Mr. Speaker. Because we might wait for NADCO reports until God knows the two years are over, the 13th Parliament should be remembered as the House that entrenched NGCDF in the Constitution, Mr. Speaker, so that this cannot be a ping-pong, ping-pong game, depending on who is on the bench, Mr. Speaker. 
The second issue, the hate that Honorable Junette has talked about is true. People just generally hate members of parliament. And so I wouldn't even be surprised after it has been entrenched in the constitution, the judiciary saying it is unconstitutionally inside the constitution, Mr. Speaker, because of just the hate people have uh, towards members of parliament, Mr. Speaker. To conclude, I want to say this now that I'm on the floor, Mr. Speaker, to remind the executive, Mr. Speaker, that there is one uh, cabinet secretary position which has not been filled in this country, Mr. Speaker. We are KJ. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. And it is to say that the oh, courts... Oh, are... KJ. Yes, so give her one minute. One minute. There is a position of a cabinet secretary that has not been filled in this country, and I want to remind the executive just in case they have forgotten. We do not have the cabinet secretary of gender and affirmative action, Mr. Speaker, in this house, Madam Speaker, sorry. If it was another ministry, I want to assure you, by today, the replacement of that cabinet minister, minister would have happened. We cannot continue to continue business when we do not have the cabinet secretary of gender in this country, Mr. Speaker. It should be, the, the cabinet secretary should be appointed like yesterday, Madam Speaker. Even if it is a man, we need a cabinet secretary of gender in this country. Thank you. Uh, what's your point of order, Honorable Donya? Madam Speaker, I'm just worried, uh, Honorable Junette is insisting that it is a man. We have not refused if it is a man, a boy, girl. What we want is to have a minister for gender in office. We, we keep on talking about uh, gender mainstreaming, helping our young girls and women. How can we, Madam Speaker, yes, we know it is CDF, but Madam Thank you. Uh, Honorable KJ, you may proceed. You are on the floor. Thank Madam you, Speaker, I thank you and I acknowledge the change of guard. Madam Speaker, the courts had their day. Today it is Parliament that has its day to remind the courts that even the courts can err, that they can make mistakes, Mr. Speaker. When you read that judgment, Madam Speaker, you notice a fundamental fault in how they were deciding on this matter. One of the bigger issues, Madam Speaker, they were saying that the constituency cannot be a unit of devolution. But Madam Speaker, we all know that NGCDF is not a devolved fund. In fact, the word that she should be using is that national government has decentralized the monies from the center to the 290 constituency, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker. And it is also to disabuse the notion, Madam Speaker, that anyone can imagine that by removing NGCDF, they are punishing a member of parliament. Madam Speaker, in the Goretti South constituency, the NGCDF is not to benefit John Carrier. The NGCDF has renovated all primary schools in the constituency. It has built in excess of seven new schools. Out of the 12 new schools in Nairobi, seven of them are in the Goretti South constituency. Madam Speaker, it has improved the working status of the officers in Gao, made sure that our people are served in dignified places. So, Madam Speaker, I would want to agree to, with all the members who are saying that Article 95 and 96 allows this House to make laws, Madam Speaker, and no other entity can make laws. And if that be the case, then we as the 13th parliament must agree that we are the people who are going to entrench this NGCDF in the constitution so that it can continue bettering the life of members. Finally, Madam Speaker, we all agree that even if we have devolved units called counties, the devolved units called counties has served more as devolution for corruption rather than devolving services to the people. Madam Speaker, Nairobi City County receives in excess of 30 billion Kenya shillings from Division of Revenue and monies that uh, they raise as own revenue. It, that means that in the Goretti South constituency every year, 
I should be feeling the impact of around 2 billion Kenya shillings coming from Nairobi City County coffers, Madam Speaker. But if you go to the constituency called the Goretti South constituency, what you shall find are the projects that have been put up by this most visible, best managed, and most effective fund called the NGCDF. So, Madam Speaker, let's do what is necessary. Let us entrench NDG, NGCDF in the Constitution to make... Uh, honorable members, allow me to recognize the presence of Kiwanzani Academy from Kitui West Constituency, Kitui County, who are seated in the public gallery. On behalf of the members of the National Assembly, we welcome you to Bunge. Thank you. Uh, the Honorable Omolo Amolo Otiende. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, first, let me recognize and thank the team uh, of lawyers that uh, did this matter pro bono, Honorable Chep Konga, Honorable Murugara, Honorable Kaluma, Honorable Mutuse, Honorable Muriu, Honorable Makali, Honorable Soro, Honorable Mogaka, and myself. Madam Speaker, we have no doubt as a team that the decision rendered by the High Court is wrong on so many uh, fronts. It is wrong on... Um, the role of the MPs in CDF. It is wrong on the role and term of the fund account managers who are not in any way connected to the MPs. It is wrong on following the obita dicta by the Supreme Court when the Supreme Court rendered an opinion on an act that had since been repealed and therefore is not binding. And for the avoidance of doubt, Madam Speaker, we have already agreed that we will appeal that decision. The good thing is that after declaring the act unconstitutional, the court did a suspension of the declaration of invalidity for two years. That is enough time for us to prosecute a number of things. It is enough time for us to prosecute the appeal. You will remember, Madam Speaker, that previously the High Court declared the previous act unconstitutional. The Court of Appeal did not agree and affirmed it, and only the High Court then agreed with the uh, you know, only the Supreme Court then agreed with the High Court. It is quite possible that we might follow a similar trajectory on this matter. Madam Speaker, secondly, and this we have said before, the ultimate solution to all this push and pull is amendment of the Constitution. And that amendment, Madam Speaker, we have already agreed, even in the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, that we want to make it a standalone, uh, you know, amendment away from the entire NADCO report. It is our view as the lawyers and at the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee that we can execute that amendment without requiring a referendum. Yes. Madam Speaker, the beauty is that once we have entrenched the NGCDF, then the constitutional provision cannot be unconstitutional. It will be along the lines of having entrenched the judiciary fund, and that then should be a proper cushion. But once we do the amendment, we will then again have to redo the act itself by bringing a new act, which will be in line with the amendment. Madam Speaker, a lot of people do not understand, and if you allow me just one more minute, Madam Speaker, that before CDF and before devolution, the, before decentralization, the situation was very, very bad. You had a situation where there were parts of this country that would not even get one cent. It is only the CDF that goes to all the 290 constituencies in this country. It is only through devolution that... Just as I'm finishing, Madam finish Speaker, it is, we must also pass a message to, as I'm closing, Madam Speaker, the real drivers of these cases is not even the two people who went to court. It is the governors, it is the Senate, and there is some particular NGO uh, called the Institute for Social Accountability that has kept bringing these cases on instigation of these others. We must tell them that even if these funds went away, they will not go to the governors, they will not go to those who think that they will get it, not even the Senate. It will recentralize and you will not see that money. And with that, Madam Speaker, let us also demand that the balance of monies that should have been given in the last financial year, about 50 million that is owed to each constituency, be now released so that we can do the projects that ought to have been done. Thank you, Madam Speaker.
the Honorable Wakili Robert Mur Mur uh, sorry, Edwin Murray. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, for the opportunity to ventilate on uh, this very wrong judgment which has been passed against NGCDF. Madam Speaker, I was part of the legal team which represented Parliament on this matter. We were able to ventilate on a number of issues. And to our surprise, Madam Speaker, out of nine key issues, none of them the court was able to appreciate, despite the fact that we were able to put in the proper legal position, the consumer position, but the court came in as a biased court. Madam Speaker, my worry and concern, because you know in any trial, you are able to get the things we are not being said, but the petitioners, whose name has been alluded in this, in this, in this house, the, the Council of Governors, the, our Senate, they have one key issue, which I would say is a sibling, sibling uh, jealousy. In this sense, Madam Speaker, a council could stand before the, before, before, before the judges and say, look now, you, you are members of parliament, this money, you are, you, you, you'll be using as, as pocket money uh, to, to, to campaign for it. It tells you the kind of conversations that are being said behind our back. But as speaker, I think it's important that we put it very clearly, that NGCDF is a fund under the national government, and the national government can be able to dispense that money as provided by the constitution. Second, Madam Speaker, I noted one of the key drivers of NCDF and success level is because 90% of the fund goes to development, things and tangible things which, are, which benefit the common person. In the opposite, the county of governors, they know very well, they spend 90% of their money doing trips and doing other mundane things which has no benefit to our people. Madam Speaker, I am I'm trying to urge the members of parliament, let us not lament like people who have no hope. This parliament has power to ensure that we are able to cure this issue or these merit issues of litigation against NC NGCDF once and for all. Though, Madam Speaker, we are going to the, to, the, to the Court of Appeal, we have a strong case, we know we can be able to win it, but the ultimate goal is to ensure we have entrenched the fund in the constitution in such a way that in the future nobody can come back and, and claim that the the fund is unconstitutional let me give the honorable milio the ambo then i'll come to you honorable osoro uh thank you madam speaker for giving me this opportunity Madam Speaker, I just want to uh, inform Senior Counsel Honorable Botende Amolo that part of the reason they are having problems is the entire legal team was men. There is no women and yet there are brilliant women lawyers like me in this house. Next time put us there and we will help you. Secondly, Madam Speaker, in areas that have been predominantly opposition, the only fund you can rely on that is changing lives is CDF. Third, Madam Speaker, in my own constituency, I have seen us move from mud walled grass thatch schools to permanent schools. I would want to encourage the judges and people who live in cities to do an immersion in the village so that they know the reality. Yes. A lot of people do not know the reality on the ground. The people who are posh in cities. The lawyers and the ones who are lofty go to the ground and learn the reality. Madam Speaker, I would also want to say that in relation to the law, our judges, especially Supreme Court, have been very liberal and progressive in interpretation of the Constitution. That is why they even interpreted the Constitution to include gay, gay rights. But when it comes to development, then they start telling you Montesquieu, separation of powers, I have no problem with separation of powers as espoused by Montesquieu many years back. But Montesquieu does not come from my village Kolo in Rusinga Island. He does not know the pe what people go through. 
That is a very good concept that one, something good is finally coming out of Africa, which is the issue of NDCDF. Development, and Madam Speaker, I was just discussing with Honorable Tiende Amolo, that we must be brave as lawyers. And if there is one legacy we must leave in this House, is to entrench the fourth role of a member of parliament in this country, which is development. If it does not come through NGCDF, it will come through my pocket. That is the reality. And the members that came before us were overwhelmed. That is why they prom promoted this. Right now, the role of MPs has totally been removed. But MPs are still being harassed. Put it and make MPs have a role. I have no excuse anybody can bash me what they want. But as an intellectual and as a bright lawyer, this is one thing I am willing to defend to my grave. Bora usiguze NGCDF. When Gina wanasema bora usiguze mulima, mimi bora usiguze NGCDF. Apo tutapigana. The Honorable Member for South Mukirango, Honorable Sylvain Sosoro. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, uh, I also want to associate myself with the sentiments uh, that have been uh, made by my colleagues. And I also do not want to delve so much on the judgment that, has been de that was delivered uh, last week because I've actually gone through it. In all aspects, I'm actually against it by all standards because it still, it actually does not meet jurisprudential you know, authority in all aspects. I mean, the learned judges, Honorable Speaker, only focused on what we call the school of thought in jurisprudence that we call positivism where they are so keen on unnecessary positivism and they ignore the element in, in a very social matter, ignore the socialism jurisprudence, ignore the natural law in all aspects, Honorable Speaker. But I do not want to go that direction, Honorable Speaker. But of importance, Honorable Speaker, for me, it is the character of the Council of Governors. Honorable Speaker, NGCDF is 2.5% of the national budget. Each constituency gets about 130 million there about when you do tabulation. County governments get a minimum of 15%. In fact, this house, this house gave them in the last financial year 25% last financial year. About 25 or 26% there about. In the last financial year, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, if two, when you do tabulation, you'll realize that in the 2.5% that we get, or the constituencies get in terms of the NGCDF, each constituency gets about 120 million at the highest, or 140 million shillings. Honorable Speaker, with the allocated amounts in the counties, some counties that get about 11 billion in the shared revenue, place in their budget 500 million for the office of the governor's expense. 500 million. But NGCDF for the consumption of the common Mwanainti, only 100 million. With 11 billion in some counties, and even some of them getting up to 15 billion, you will actually need a microscope, and I've said this several times, to see what governors do. But they were the first people to go in court, Honorable Speaker. They, apply, they applied to be interested parties in this matter. They even wrote a, a letter to the Chief Justice and in now very common character and demeanor of the current court, Honorable Speaker, they have applied what you call judici judicial activism, populist rulings, populist judgments, where they now get their, they, they now get their, their jurisprudence from Facebook, from social media, from messages they get, and sometimes from some political leaders who are against very important concerns.